Well, the right everyone, iOS and iPadOS 26.1 is officially out to the entire public, and it comes with some substantial upgrades, features, and changes that we definitely have to go through. I'll be using the iPad Pro as the showcase to show off all the new features, but everything that I mentioned here, except for one, will also translate over to iOS 26.1. So without further ado, let's see exactly what's new and what's important to you. But now before we continue, if you enjoy videos like this where we talk about all things Apple, especially the new software updates as they come along, definitely consider subscribing to the channel. But let's talk about the first thing which has to do with iOS 26.1. Let's get into it. Well, the right of you one, here we have iPadOS 26.1, and I did update it, and it was roughly around 10 gigs, so give yourself about twice that in order to get this installed and installed correctly. And to give you guys the actual build number, if we go into the about, go into the iPadOS version, we're on iPadOS 26.123B82. So that's going to be the latest version of iPadOS 26.1, and it should be relatively similar for iOS 26.1. But now the first thing I wanna mention here is going to be that brand new liquid glass toggle, which some people are really gonna like, some people are gonna be a little bit iffy about it, but if you go down into your settings, go down to where it says display and brightness, you now have this liquid glass option. You now have the toggle to go between clear and tinted. And if you go and see it up here, you can see what's changing in terms of going from here to then a little bit more clear. I personally like it a little bit more clear because it gives, this, it, gives it like an essence of higher quality or maybe a little bit more expensive but again it's all purely preference i do wish there was a actual maybe meter or a slider to indicate how much you want but then again i'm sure there's like a lot of ram management that goes behind and maybe there isn't enough on the actual chipsets to deal with it or at least it would take up too much power and it wouldn't be worth it so apple instead of kind of giving us that slider they decided hey if you want it clear go clear if you want it tinted go tinted so that is one of the new updates to 26.1 Okay, so next up has to be in the lock screen. So on um, both iOS and iPadOS, if you go into your lock screen without actually unlocking anything, you swipe to the right, you go to the camera. And that's always been like that, or at least it's been like that for years and years. And now you can actually disable that, which is funny enough, something that we could never do before. So if you go into our settings and go to our camera, and then go down to where it says lock screen swipe to open camera, you can now toggle that off if you want to. So if you do toggle it off, that means every time you swipe to the right, nothing's gonna happen. If you, and then turn it on, then swipe to the right, it will bring up that camera application. It'll give you like that shortcut to go into the camera. I like to keep this turned off on my iPhone, but keep it turned on on my iPad because it's just different use cases. And on the iOS side, it's almost too redundant because you have the camera control to open up the camera app. You have the lock screen button icon if you want to, which I've already removed. And now you have that swipe to the right to get to the camera. So three ways to get to the camera is too many for my taste. The next one's gonna be in the photos application. If you notice here, the scrubber is actually a little bit different than it was before. So if I just tap on the scrubber, I can hold down. And of course, that's what it looks like. Before, it looked a little bit different in the older versions of iOS 26 and before that. I don't really know if I like this or not. It's a little bit different. I kind of liked it when the liquid glassiness was there before, but again, just a new slider and a new visual for when you're looking at video inside the native photos application. Another small change that happened is the TV application now has this kind of like rainbowy frosted hue behind the Apple logo and the TV letters, which is again, just a visual change, nothing too crazy in terms of what a functionality gives you, but that's just a new icon for Apple TV. And there is a new naming moniker. I think it's all now Apple TV. Apple dropped the Apple TV Plus from its streaming service. So now Apple TV can be four different things. It could be the physical Apple TV. It could be the Apple TV application. It could be the Apple TV service. And it could be the Apple TV hub. Again, Apple needs to figure out that naming moniker right now. Another new piece is going to be in the alarm itself. So on iOS, this is a little bit different. Here you just have your snooze button and your stop button for when an alarm does go off. On the iPhone, you can actually slide to stop it or slide to snooze it. Versus here, you do have just your buttons that you've had for a while now, but that's just something new to take note of. Next up, we have the Apple Music application. I'm gonna dim this down, but you can actually just press play on any song or anything like that. And you can actually just swipe down here to swipe to the next song if you want to. So there's now multiple ways to interact with each song. If you go and click on here, you can also swipe to the right to go to the next song. So just a new way to interact and skip forward and skip backwards for all the different song choices that you see on here. And then another thing is, depending on the type of song, there's new translations in the lyrics. So again, if I kind of zoom in through here, you have the little caption or the lyrics button. And then sometimes, again, I don't really know what triggers it 100% of the time, but you do see some translations go underneath here. I was able to show that off in one of the beta instances or releases that we had earlier in the month. But again, that's something that does come up. If you're listening to a Spanish song or a song that's not in English, the English translation will show up underneath the lyrics. 
And then another huge one that everybody was either very happy about or very sad about was slide over. So Apple did away with slide over in lieu of the new windowing mode, which we have over here. So if you hover over here, you long press on here. This is kind of what the slide over was or the replacement for this new multitasking and windowing system. But Apple heard our feedback and they added a new slide over option. Now it's not exactly the same, but that's how you actually bring it up. So the way to bring it up is whenever you open up an application, it can be any application, you hold over here, long press on the green, and then there's a enter or exit slide over. So we can exit it there. To show you guys again, I'll go over, long press, go to enter slide over, and then there you have it. So slide over will stay there. You can throw it to the other side, like you used to throw the other one, throw it this way, and then you can also resize it a bit if you want to. So you can make it really small, which is perfect for something like this, where you're just using Apple Music or Apple Podcasts or something just in the background. And you can have up to three different ones in your slide over menu. So if I go here or tap on this one, long press. And the thing is you can only have one in the slide over view at a time, which is kind of unfortunate. And again, each one is going to be act a little bit differently, but overall, this is what you're going to be brought with. You can still slide it back and forth if you want to kind of move it around a little bit, but it's going to stay on either the right or the left hand side, either top right or top left or bottom right and bottom left that's kind of the situations you can do it with or again like i said you can elongate it make it bigger it just kind of depends on how you want to do it but the slide over will stay persistent it'll be over and it'll take kind of default over any other multitasking window that you have but at the same time you can't swipe it away like you could with other kind of slide over windows that you had in the past so it's kind of combining the old version of slide over with the persistent windowing mode and something that just feels a little bit more familiar than it has in days past but overall the new slide over i personally like it i know a lot of people don't one thing I wish that they could add is that if you can maybe have three slide over options, so you can maybe swipe over here to go in between them, I think that'll be a recipe for success moving forward. So a little bit of feedback there for Apple. But those are all the major changes to iPadOS and iOS 26. Of course, the slide over is going to be an iPadOS exclusive. But now the next thing I want to do is actually show the battery life that we had with iPadOS 26.1, the beta. So we go up here, go into our battery. You can see if we go into our view all battery usage, you can see on a day like here, which is going to be Thursday, 54% battery used, about two and a half hours of screen on time. So I'm getting anywhere from five to seven hours of screen on time when I am using it intensely, and then anywhere from seven to nine hours when I am using it a little bit more casually. But again, my iPad Pro is my workhorse. I use this for everything, and this is something that I use as an actual work tool as opposed to just a casual throw around machine. But that is going to be iPadOS 26.1. Let's finish up this video, everybody. Now that will just about do for this video, everybody. As you saw, there's a good amount of changes that happened with iPadOS and iOS 26.1, from the liquid glass toggle to kind of change up exactly what's going on from a translucent standpoint. Also, the new live translations is live on AirPods Pro 2 and AirPods Pro 3. And then we got the new slide over or new variation of slide over back to iPadOS, which is something that a lot of people were yearning for. And I actually think it's a better version of the one we had previously. But let me know in the comment down below who you think. Did you guys update to 26.1? What new features did you guys see that maybe we missed out on? Always curious to know in the comments down below. But if you didn't make it to the end, leave a little dolphin. And if you wanna watch more videos like this one, check out one of these videos right here. Until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everyone.